In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I know some people, and I, I'm, I'm like this sometimes, um, they'll try something out. They'll try, maybe they want to learn something new. They'll learn a new language. They want to read a new book, something like that. And they'll try for a couple of hours. And it's fun at the beginning. And then by the time they get to the second day of class or the second page of the book, it gets a little bit hard. I know some people that say, you know, I want to start praying every day. And they'll pray every single day for three, four days. And then they'll miss one day. That's the important moment. When you mess up, when you miss a class, when the book gets hard, when the language gets difficult, when the new job starts to get tough, when you miss a day of prayer, it's so tempting to say, well, I messed up, I'm never going to do this again. You might be like that. The people that have that kind of personality, I'm like that sometimes too. That if I mess up one time, that's the end of the world. I'm never going to try anything again. I'm never going to try this again. It's the end. I give up. In today's gospel, some women go to Jesus' tomb, and in the tomb, they see a young man, an angel, sitting in the tomb, and he says, what are you looking for the living one among the dead? Go, the angel tells them, go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going to Galilee, and there he, you will see him. These women... They just were, they, they were freaked out. They got scared and they went home. They did not do what the angel told them to do. Then Jesus appears, sorry, then uh, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. And he tells Mary Magdalene, go, and Mary Magdalene goes and she tells the disciples. So she does it and the disciples don't believe in her. They don't believe what she said. Imagine God is sending this angel he tells these women to go and preach. They don't even do it. Jesus sends Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene goes and preaches. They don't believe her. That's two failures. After the resurrection, after everything. If God was as impatient and prideful as we were, that's two mess-ups. God would have said, okay, fine, forget it. I wash my hands of you. I give up. God does not give up. What does he do the third time after two failures? Jesus himself appears to the disciples. They had two chances. Somebody failed both times. Okay, I'm going to do it myself. And he upbraided them. He chastised them. He yelled at them for their lack of faith and their hardness of heart. We are very impatient beings. And we are very prideful beings. And we want things to go smooth from beginning to end. And once we hit a bump in the road... Our temptation is to want to give up. God is not like that. I think another example of that, to a great degree, is Mother's. And it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms. And we pray for you a lot. Even, uh, even though I'm pretty sure you pray for us more. But we still pray for you, especially on this day. It seems like mothers are more prone to this kind of patience. They're more open to imitating God in this way. Sometimes to a fault, but my, is, I think maybe even more than dads. That the kid makes a mistake, okay, you made a mistake, try again. Okay, try again, and to the point where, look, you haven't learned this time, you haven't learned, okay, let me show you, let me do it, watch what I'm doing, let's do it together. They have that, the kind of heart to do that. They have the kind of love to do that. They have the kind of humility to do that. To not just give up because, and I think it's probably because it takes so long even to conceive a child, much less to have a child, and then the child is growing, patience is kind of built into motherhood. You sort of don't have a choice but to learn patience at some point. And sometimes it's even to a fault. Sometimes it's like too much. Like, the, you know, the kid is, you know, in jail for the fourth time and the mom's like, oh, he's an angel. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe you're being a little bit too patient there. But still, look at the love of a mother. Look at the heart of a mother. She just always wants to believe what's best. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a good thing. It's the way I think God wants to think of us. To say, you know what? No, there's still some good in this person. Whereas we would want to give up on ourselves 
and we wouldn't want to give up on others. That this person, man, they're like this, they're like this, this is just who they are, they're set in stone, I give up, I wash my hands. That's not true. That's impatience speaking. Jesus didn't give up on the disciples. God doesn't give up on us. I think it's wrong for us to give up on each other, even though it's very tempting. But I think it's important to see the example that Jesus gives us in the gospel today to keep trying to never give up and to look at our earthly examples of that, which I think mothers really are, to keep trying, to never give up. You mess up, okay, try again. That person has failed you, okay, let them try again, pray for them. You don't have to be friends with everybody all the time. But it's not your job, it's nobody's place to say that person is irredeemable. No, you, you don't get to say that. There's always hope, there's always a possibility that somebody could change. There's always the, at least the, the, the foothold of prayer and of God's grace. And maybe you can't fix somebody. And maybe moms try a little bit too hard to be the one that fixes somebody. Maybe it's not going to be you. Maybe it's going to, God is going to work in some other way. But prayer and never giving up and always persisting in prayer is never going to fail us. In one way or, the, or another, God's grace is going to find a foothold. And so this day, brothers and sisters, learn from God's example and from the example of the good mothers that are out there in the world. Never to give up and to always keep trying and to be patient with ourselves when we fail and with others when they fail us.